Hey guys, welcome out to the shop today. We got a, another hand plane that we're gonna be going through restoration process. This is a Stanley transitional plane. I think it is a number 81, I believe. Um, kind of hard to see the number at this current time, but it is in a pretty rough shape. Uh, picked it up online for a, a decent price and the price reflects the shape of the plane. So we're gonna go ahead and take, this thing's gonna need a complete restoration job on it. Um, and we'll go ahead and look at it real quick. So here it is, the Stanley number something. Um, and maybe you guys can see some markings on the front. Uh, this came as a 24 inch joiner plane, no markings. People said that it had nothing on there. As you can see, it is very heavily rusted, um, but there's not pitting. It's just kind of strange. It's just like just overall rust. Um, the lever cap is fairly stuck. It's hard to, I can't get it past this point right yet. And I couldn't get it moved at all at first. Squirted some PB Blast on there and it's been sitting for a little while now, trying just to break it free. Also squirted some PB Blast on the adjuster lever. And just overall, it's, I thought that it had major water damage, but it doesn't have, it's not as bad as the pictures looked on the eBay listing. Um, the iron, mouth isn't even that open so hopefully when we're flattening the bottom we don't have to open it much more but uh, we're going to go ahead and do a complete restoration on this um, i'm not sure if i'm going to just evaporust the metal right here or if we're going to take it to the sandblaster and completely redo it um, because it does seem like there's quite a bit of japanning still on there or I might uh, just evaporust it and then see what it turns out after. So let's go ahead and get started by trying to break this free and getting the parts apart. First thing that I really want to do is get the lever cap off. And it's so crunchy. I can hear it is in turning or is it? Man, that is really bad. I want to just keep on working it back and forth. I'm trying to see if I can free it up. And I still need it. Oh, it's going to come out, I think. Oh, the whole entire base is moving. So that's not really good. All right, so that's completely free. There we go. That's broke free. That is free. And let's see. Let's see, it's not really even rusted, like pitting wise. Oh, that is really bad. Here we go. You gotta be careful with some of these things because some of them will break instead of coming right apart. And it, like there's no real rusting or the pitting in this. I'm hoping that when I throw it in the vapor rust, it all just easily comes out. Oh, that's gonna break, I think. See that one's coming straight up, but the other one was turning kind of funny as I was trying to get it out of the hole. And these probably wouldn't be a big issue because I could always drill a hole and just resync something in there. Let me see if I can get this out. This one looks like it's gonna be kind of tough to get broke. Oh, I thought it was gonna be tougher than that to break loose. So that part's out. All right, let's. Man, this is gonna break. I have a bad feeling about this one. Because it's kind of going in an odd 
circular motion. Let's see what it looks like when it comes out. Maybe it's just bent. Yeah, it's just bent. That's all it is. So that's good. We can probably reuse it, maybe. Who knows? All right, so that's off. And it's got the S, the S casting mark on the frog. Let's get the handle off of here now. And I believe I'm gonna have to make a new handle for this. Because it's missing some of the top right here, which isn't that big of a deal. And this is supposed to be two pieces. This is supposed to be brass, and it's kind of stuck on there. Let's get the knob. It's got a bunch of junk in there. Now the knob looks like it's still in good condition. Great bread. Let's see if I got it down far enough to where I can get it. Ooh, that one just feels like it's gonna spin. Put some pounding on this. Never fails. Either heat or a little persuasion at the very beginning. And usually break some stuff loose. Man, that is rusted. That is rusty. All right. So now we've got this and this one left. And then that will be it for the actual body of removing the metal off of the body parts. Boom. Voila. There we go. Stanley number 80 something, I think. So there's a nice shot of all the bits and pieces, all the screws, the hardware, the handle, or I mean the tote and the knob, and then the body of the plane. And we just gotta get it all cleaned up now. I don't know right now what I'm gonna do for it. We'll figure it out though. All right guys, so I've been thinking about what to do with all the metal parts. I haven't put them in anywhere or anything like that yet. And uh, just debating on whether or not to do like an evaporust or go ahead and throw them in the blast cabinet and just be done with it. I'm leaning more towards the blast cabinet just because of how much rust it is. And it will take me less than an hour to go ahead and clean all this up. Although I do have some of these smaller screws, which that I can probably throw in the evaporust and uh, wait on those. But uh, some of the things just like the, the iron... I was thinking about just throwing it into the blast cabinet, cleaning it up, and then being done with it. But uh, we're going to start off with this body. It has a little bit of checking on the end right here, uh, which would be the tote side. And I want to go ahead and get this cleaned up and probably put a little of, uh, wax on this and get this part done. And so what I'm doing, I'm going to be using the same thing that I've used many times before, 
one third uh, turpentine, and then the rest is boiled linseed oil. And I have some uh, Scotch Brite pad, and we're just going to be scrubbing over the whole entire thing, and we're going to see what we can get cleaned up, and uh, maybe start working on getting this flattened out on the bottom. Maybe we got to probably get everything on it first, though. Might have to hold off on the flattening. But we've got this little mixture right here. Let's see if it'll open. Yeah, there we go. And uh, I just soak that uh, Scotch Brite and start to scrub. And this helps kind of put a little bit of moisture back into the plane as well as clean up some of the blackness that's on there. Uh, some of the grime that has been seeded into it and I'll just do one side at a time and then use paper towels not rags to clean it and wipe it off and hopefully a lot of this black stuff will come off because there's some that's on it that's really tacky looking like not very good and I don't want to use sandpaper to, to clean it up so we're gonna try to let the turpentine do its its thing Well, that's all she's gonna be able to get. It's not cleaning up much, uh, much better. It looks like it has sat in a little bit of water. Maybe at some point, this is a little bit rough down here. It seems like it has two good flat edges all the way down here. And this seems fairly flat. But uh, yeah, this right here is a little rough. But we did find out that this is actually a Stanley 31. And the body's mainly in good condition. It doesn't have any real gouges or anything taken out of it. Uh, just needs to be cleaned up. Might be just a mantle piece. Not exactly sure. We'd have to put on a level of some sort. So putting on a level onto it shows that it's still fairly flat. Almost all the... Yeah, I don't see any daylight coming from the other side but we'd have to put like a flashlight or something on there so it's still showing that it's fairly flat but uh yeah we gotta get all the other pieces cleaned up before we really play with it all right guys so i took this over to the wire wheel a little bit knocked off some of the rust that was kind of built up on it and i put uh some of it into the vapor rust boom so we're going to let that soak overnight. We're going to work on getting this and this one cleaned up in the uh, blast cabinet. And this still has, I don't know, 50% of the Japaning left on it maybe. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I want to try to see if it's got enough Japaning on there, but... I don't know. Let's go put this in the blast cabinet and uh, get this finished. So we got the iron done. I just wanted to show you guys. This is the finish that comes out. Um, after I did the sandblasting, I went ahead back to the wire wheel just to take away some of that sandblasted look. And we'll go ahead and put some bluing um, liquid on here and get this back to hopefully like an original uh, forged look. So... We'll see what that looks like in a minute. So it's not original look, it's not like a dark look or anything, but uh, you can see the Stanley, if you guys can see, let me see if I shine a light on it and you guys can see it a little bit better. You guys can see that it says Stanley on there now, 
and it's not rusted anymore, which is good. That's what I was going for. So we're going to let the other parts sit in the evapor rust over there overnight and let that chemical do its work on all the rust out of there. And then we'll see how the chip breaker compares to the iron after uh, it's been in there for a little bit. All right, guys. So here's what we got going on. Um, the iron was put in the sandblaster. Went ahead and put some of the blue material on it, and I like it. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it doesn't look originally forged, but it it looks a lot better. And then we have the chip breaker, which sat in the evaporust, and I did the exact same thing. Pulled it out, cleaned it, put it on the wire wheel, and this is what the look is that I got for it. So it would sit kind of like that we would probably go ahead and put the blue material on this as well but there's still some rust on it like uh, in the pitted areas where you see it's darker there's rust in that area and then here is the lever cap also put in the evapor rust and it did fairly well but this was I guess pretty heavily rusted and uh, it may take another time or two to get off unless I just throw it into the sandblaster. And this shiny piece of material right here was the frog. And uh, it was also put in the sandblaster and totally cleaned up. And I like this. I was able to free up the adjuster on it and get it to where all that moves and get the brass knob off. So I'm thinking I might just continue on with the sandblaster and get these two finished because I can do this in like 20 minutes. And then we have all the hardware that's in here that I still need to look at and uh, figure out where we're at with that. But I mean, you guys can see there's a lot of debris in there, which means that there was a lot of rust on these parts and pieces. And then we have the body, I guess you would call it the metal body part. For the transitional part and uh, I think I'm gonna throw that in the sandblaster as well just get it cleaned up and then we can get those painted and stuff today while it's still a little bit warmer so I know it looks kind of like a mess but this is where we're at for the hardware we got everything sandblasted and painted both the uh, iron pieces are blued and they look good um, I'm thinking about doing the actual iron again I'll probably sharpen it and then re-blue it again um, and then I've gotten all of these pieces cleaned up and then I went ahead and threw some bluing on those so they weren't so shiny as well on the uh, pieces that are going to be like um, exposed. So that's where we're at with all of the hardware pieces and I think that for the frog I'm supposed to leave these right here unpainted but it's not going to hurt. I'm probably not going to be reselling this, so this one will go into the user category, or at least into the uh, display, I guess, if uh, the iron is no good. But uh, we got to still work on that. Got to get that sharpened, and then the toe and the knob have to get redone. Got to sand those, and it looks like somebody put lacquer on those, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, probably put some shellac on them. So I've uh, swapped out steps for going from the plain body to working on the iron. I want to go ahead and get that put in place. And uh, I got this little jig right here set up. I can't remember. Maybe it's a, yeah, it's a Stanley. And uh, I got this set up for 35 degree angle. And I'm just going to go ahead and get my bevel created on this. Um, there is some uh, very slight chipping on the edge, so I'm going to see if I can just uh, use the sandpaper to get it out and um, work on it like that. If not, I'll go ahead and take it to the grinder, but uh, hopefully I think I can get by with using sandpaper and then I'll go to some stones. Alright guys, so some uh, disappointing news, um, you know, when you're doing an iron fresh off, you always want to go ahead and flatten the back. Um, I went ahead and started shaping the front just to see where it was going to go, what it was going to look like. And I couldn't get rid of, the, uh, rid of all the pitting. And every time 
that I thought I was gonna get a nice edge, more pitting would evolve, and I started trying to flatten the back, and I just don't think that I'm gonna get the back flattened enough to actually use this iron. I hope you guys can see that. Like, there's not a good spot whatsoever. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But there's pitting, even where you see like a small little line, it's just, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Um, so I really like having, man, it's just terrible that this is such a, uh, a good amount of use still left in this, but the pitting has just, has just eaten away at it. And I don't have any irons that are wide enough for this. So I'm gonna go ahead, sadly, yes, I know, I wanna see an iron put onto this and see it uh, take some shavings and stuff like that. I really do, trust me. Um, but I just don't think it's, it's gonna work. So normally I would just take this and put a bolt through here and a nut on this side, tighten it down, and then put this into the chuck of my drill press. Just turn it on and then I would just go around and let the sandpaper do the work. Um, but I've recently used that one bolt that I was using and I don't know if I have any others. So to save time, I'm just gonna go ahead and hand sand it. There is not a big deal. It's gonna get um, some shellac on it anyway. So I opted to go ahead and just wax these instead of putting some shellac on them. I looked back a while ago after I redid the body and they actually use a lacquer finish on the Stanley Plane. The uh, 31 had a lacquer finish on it, but uh, I've already taken all that off and then installed a wax finish on this. So I decided to go ahead and do the same with uh, these. So that is what it's gonna be like and uh, we just gotta get the pieces attached. Well, it's cutting a little bit. Well, I mean, it's cutting, it's getting some shavings but they aren't very good. And like I said, I'm not surprised because that uh, iron is like really, really bad shape. And there it is in its final state. I really do wish that we could have gotten a good iron out of that, but sadly it's not going to work. Uh, we'd probably have to reorder, like order an iron or get one off of eBay something like that but i'm very happy with it at least how it looks i wish that uh the operation wise it would do a lot better but whenever i first got it nothing was moving it had no print on the iron and also you weren't able to see the stanley on there as well so this is a stanley uh, number 31 and it's a transitional plane It's a bigger joiner, it's 24 inches in length. So thanks guys for watching, checking out this restoration. I wish it would have ended on a better note than having a busted up iron, I really do. Uh, but the plane looks great. I really like the outcome of it and the paint did really good. I eventually want to start trying to do my own Japaning and redoing it that way because that is the original style that these were done. I'm not there yet though guys, so hang tight, uh, hopefully this spring, I will probably try to do something like that and do some kind of Japaning and learning how to do that. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, wish it would have turned out better with the iron, but it is what it is. Hit that thumbs up button. If you guys are new, welcome to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys on the next video.